Riding shotgun refers to the practice of sitting next to the driver in a moving vehicle. The term riding shotgun came around after the time of the stagecoach, when somebody used to sit next to the driver holding a shotgun, in case they ran into bandits. My name is Charlie Cook, and I drive a lot. I like to talk to people while I'm driving, so I interview people in my car while I'm driving. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Charlie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Today we are in Marietta, Georgia, and I have with me Brian Hill and his beautiful wife in the back. Hey, girl. Uh, Shelly Hill, they're from The Complete Combatant. Before we start the show, we are going to put on some Lead Slinger's hand sanitizer. Sure. Lead Slinger's hand sanitizer is super watery, so you need the two hands, you need to okay. cup them really well. Okay. Lead Slinger's not only makes hand sanitizer, actually I think they stopped making hand sanitizer, but they do make whiskey, and they make a rye, and <laughs> um, Automatic they make a cinnamon whiskey, I know. Ooh, <laughs> behind your ears. Hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> Brian. It is great to have you in the car. Thank you for having Shelley, us, Shelly. It is always you. It is always good to see you, sweetheart. Um, we're going to talk about you guys and the complete combatant and mixed martial arts and all the cool stuff that you guys do down here in Georgia. And every we like you. You're everywhere, man. Everywhere. You Brian, everywhere. Brian, Brian, and some Shelly. <laughs> try, try editing his videos. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian, Brian. Oh my god. Awesome. <laughs> It could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are having a horrible summer. You got to, had a lot of personal things going on, and then you got to go riding shotgun with Charlie. <laughs> this like, is oh, the highlight. It's, we're moving up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This is the highlight, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about you guys and how you guys got into gun stuff. You guys are a husband and wife team mm -hmm. that teach a number of uh, a number of courses, not just um, not just gun safety stuff, but a lot of defensive stuff and a lot of defensive minded stuff. And you've got a, uh, their little bag is back there with your stuff. We'll, we'll plug that as well. Oh, is it? The image based the it signal drills? Be, it should be to your left. Okay, excellent. All right. So let's get into it. How did you get into gun stuff? You're, you came from a mixed martial arts? Yeah. Uh, when I was 13, um, I decided that in order to save my life, I needed to be like Kwa Jang Kang. So I started training in martial arts. And I loved martial arts. It gave me some structure for my chaotic personality. And it taught me how to approach things, how to learn, how to get better at things. And it was a lifelong passion. I've been teaching martial arts my whole life. And then it evolved into several other things where I you know, started teaching weapons. And then uh, I really got interested in shooting. Bought my first rifle at 18. Got my first handgun as soon as I was 21. Um, and I did a lot of training. And uh, we're talking about, you know, the 80s now, so training was very it was sparse. was last century. Yeah. Uh, the only person <laughs> that I knew of was uh, Masada Yu, you know, because he course. wrote continually for Gun Mags. Right. And I was able to take one of his first courses. Um, and then I went into law enforcement, just one more light, uh, for the Fulton County Sheriff's Department Reserve. And I was a bouncer and did all those things. So I've always had an, a real interest in applied violence, is what we like to call it. Applied violence. <laughs> and I own, you know, I own martial arts schools. I've been teaching for four decades. Um, wow. And I, uh, the really funny part of this is uh, the resurgence for me on the gun side was my wife said to me, hey, you're getting a little old to fight. Which is just what every man wants to hear, oh, and she was no. she was not wrong, okay. and so I said, "All right, listen, you, you know, know what? True, I'm, though. I'm getting yeah. old. I'm, yeah. I'm gaining Long weight. Enough. She you said, know, I'm not like I'm losing my hair. Hey, but your eyesight's great." She, she said, "Well, it, this is the funny part." She said, "You know, if you get injured, the business is in trouble," mm -hmm. and I said, "All right, but you know I'm competitive," and she goes, "I know," and I said, "So I'm going to the I'm going to compete with with firearms," and she said, "That sounds much safer than fighting." <laughs> it does. <laughs> Off you go so it made a complete resurgence in that but what I found once I got into the industry again is that there was a lack of integrated training yeah. mm -hmm. you know everybody was very much a specialist right so we wanted to go from the first signs of danger to legal aftermath and everything in between and that's how we got started in it and my lovely wife who supports me in most everything I do, mm -hmm. except being old. Right, right. <laughs> uh, she, she has a, a, a real passion for this and a real love and to help other people. And our 
our pure goal in life is to get them to help uh, be able to protect themselves and get home safely each time. Yeah, for sure. You know, and what we can do to do that. So very cool, my love. How'd you get in? Yeah, how did you get into this? Because you had a career Him. in a different world. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, medical. Uh, started in with medical when I was about 19 years old. Yeah. And did um, uh, OR and then. Uh, you can bring yourself a little closer if you want. I mean, I will zoom in on you. How's it going? Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would have wore different pants if I knew I was going to be like sitting right. like riding a horse. <laughs> so I did. Everything's fine though. So, yeah. <laughs> My head's hitting the top, and now I have to scoot forward. This is perfect. No. I did have Lori Blackwell oh, um, yeah. from the DC Project. Yeah. She sat in the back, and she's like, yeah, I guess I probably should have worn a pair of pants. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we so, got this. Sorry about we, that. We got this. Yeah, I'll just kind of kind of lean forward. Uh, yeah, uh, 19, started working in the medical field, stayed in that forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brian and I actually met when I was uh, 14 and he was 17. So we've been Oh friends. my God. Wait, that's yeah. legal down here in Georgia. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. Well, we're, and we're not cousins. So. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> so it been legal. <laughs> we, did, we, did, we did really good legally. Uh, no. So, you know, we were friends and then, of course, you know, uh, became more in our adult life. Right. Um, and, you know, once again, he's always been into this. So uh, I was drawn to uh, the personal protection side. Mm -hmm. uh, I fired a, a firearm a couple times, but nothing big. And then, of course, you know, all I do is ask the right questions. And he kind of uh, guided me mm -hmm. and let me let me go at my own pace through this. And uh, then I was hooked. Sure. It, but it also kind of coincides with um, I'm one of the founders of Rachel's Rest, which is a nonprofit. Uh, organization mm -hmm. uh, for uh, sexually abused uh, women and children or acts of violence yeah. so so much of what I do there um, and experienced there helping others mm -hmm. um, you can cross over and so much yeah, of what absolutely. I learned you know working with with Brian and, and his mindset so uh, what was it just a couple of years ago all in started mm -hmm. carrying it 2000 I think right um, something to that effect and then of course looking for certification so I can help others mm -hmm. and uh, have a, a nice um, structure foundation underneath me and uh, so that's kind of where we're at now is very cool yeah yeah I have um, this has probably only happened to me once and I, I imagine it's happened with you guys more uh, I teach the gun safety class so people can get their gun license in, in Massachusetts you have to take some sort of a class before you can buy anything mm -hmm. And I don't really think that uh, I don't really think that my students, or well, as, as as Claude Warner likes to call them, my clients, mm -hmm. I don't think of them ever having to have to use a gun defensively. I'm like, hey, this is this is how you're safe, and this is how you don't hurt yourself, and you know, here's how you load it, here's how you unload it, here's this, here's how you get your gun license. I had a woman one time that said she had she was in an abusive relationship and um, she was concerned about her husband coming back and finding her and i'm like holy crap mm -hmm. all of a sudden it felt yeah. much more serious mm -hmm. and i never i don't want to say i don't think about it but i don't i don't think that it has to be mm -hmm. uh, like i never think of the, the gravity is not the right word but yeah no, no. i don't think it's i yeah. don't think it's you think of the gravitas of the situation right. it's yeah, huge right. though yeah. it is it is it is the reason behind each person this is something that that um you know i personally found is the reason behind each person seeking some sort of uh help or education whatever word you want to use uh, um, it's different oh, everybody is so different some people are looking at it as a um self-defense right uh, mm -hmm. some are for protection of others uh, some is uh, for fun right that you you know competing I mean everybody's different but if you go back there's gonna be probably something in their brain if you're talking about a self-protection situation <laughs> there's something that triggered that sure and it could have been you know it is a childhood or whatever but uh, there, there there could easily be something that triggered that so everybody that walks uh, in our door shakes our hand you have to be aware that it's it's bigger than us mm -hmm. it's, it, the reason they come to us is is bigger than us so we've got to uh, well you can explain this better figure out um, how to best help them in uh, I'm gonna say their language 
Does that make sense? Honey, tell, yeah. me, tell them about the teaching part. About yeah. Warning, technical yeah. part of the video. Technical, right. But you know, this is really good because there's so many different personalities. I'm glad you put the warning in. Yeah, I don't, know. Warning, Will I, don't, I don't know if Robert's going to say this. Yeah. Yeah. Warning. Pay, pay attention now. I'm not, it's going to be quick, I, I promise. I what you said. Yeah. But no, this so, is good because everybody learns show. differently and you gotta you got to respect that. And what he does, I think, is brilliant. Yeah, we were talking about this uh, over coffee yeah. this morning. Oh, okay. And, and you were... You're much more into the why are you doing this this way and why, yeah. why are you doing this and you know and that sort of stuff. Well, you know, I was telling you, I four decades of coaching and professional fighters is a part of that. One of the hardest things to do in the world is to train a man for eight weeks that's going to or a woman and jump in the cage and face another person that's trained equally as hard and they're going to fight by themselves. Mm -hmm. So we have to really learn how to you know the coach's job, the teacher's job is to bridge the gap so that we meet them in a place where they understand what's going on. So we know that people are listeners, are their lookers, mm -hmm. are their feelers, mm -hmm. and they communicate that with their body language. You know, the looker's gonna make good eye contact, the listener's gonna tilt their head and look away from you, and mm -hmm. the feeler's gonna, of course, shake your hands and hug you. Mm -hmm. So how do I talk to that person? <laughs> My words need to reflect the way that they, they interact. So I would talk to Shelly and say, here's what you need to feel when you work the trigger. You know, mm. and then when I'm I'm talking to somebody who's a looker, here's what you should see. And the listener, I'm going to be verbose, which is really easy, as you guys can tell from me. And I'm going to use a lot of visually descriptive words and depth words so that they can make some connection to it. Then the other side of training is people are there's a psychological portion, there's a physiological, and then there's a technical portion. Right. So we concentrate on the technical, but psychologically how you're going to react, how the other person's going to react, and why you're doing this is incredibly important. And physiologically is what does stress do to you and who are you during stress? And who are they during stress right. is incredibly important right. too. So see all sorts yeah. of things come out. Yeah. You so know? we got to meet them. Yeah. And you know, the job for the person coming to us is a, a learning firearms is course to be safe. Right. You know, we want to bridge off, but we've got to meet them in a place where they can overcome all the other barriers to the entrance and bridge that gap and be able to speak to them in a way that resonates with them. Sure. And that's where the burden for the coaches or the teachers always is. Yeah, you also have to think about since the complete combatant is not all about um, uh, firearms. It's about making good decisions. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you're making good decisions. You got to talk about um, or, or think about using uh, verbal commands, right? right. Um, you got to think about the escalation. You got to think about maybe putting hands up and start thinking about uh, making space, right? Uh, and you, there's an escalation, and when you get to a, you know, uh, what is it? Ask, uh, uh, tell, make. When you get to that with some people, just the verbal side of it, you see something else come out in them that they didn't know that they could make those words, right? They right. didn't know that they could be that aggressive because, you know, you're always taught to be nice. Just be nice, mm -hmm. right? Accept it. Just be nice and polite. Well, sometimes you can't be nice or, or polite. Yeah. So sometimes it's, most of the times, it's not a, a, a gun answer. It's a body language, a verbal command um, answer because it's going to be more of a nuisance. Mm. So when you get that, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, go. No, going. when yeah, when you when you get that person, it could be male or female guys at any age that learns that they can use their voice. You could it, it just opens up a whole nother world uh, to them because oh, yeah. you don't know what their background was that they weren't allowed <laughs> to use their voice. So it's right. it's really uh, it's very cool on on the such a, a, a small aspect of just teaching someone that it's okay to be rude. Right, it's okay and to be rude, it's okay to be loud. That's it, and yeah. then that whole spectrum of everything in between, mm -hmm. 911 call, talking to the police, uh, you know, firearms training, all that stuff is such a, uh, well, a complete, you know, uh, uh, yeah. combatant, no, kind of being <laughs> jokey, but uh, it, it is, it's, it's, it's A all the way through, it's not just one part you need to be good at, you need to be uh, experiencing all that. Mm. Uh, ask, tell, make. Tell us a little bit more about that. So Brian is actually much better at that. It really <laughs> right. is. You, yeah, he, he, it's, it's, it's amazing. 
Yeah. Yeah. Claude Warner introduced us to the yeah. concept, and it's floated around for a long time. But sure. you know, in the tactical community, we want to set our boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, we want to see danger as soon as we can, because that allows us to live in the future. If we allow somebody to get close to us and we don't recognize the danger, then we're in a reactive situation. Right. We want to be in a proactive situation. Right. Because we're always going to yep. be behind it in a reactive yeah. situation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So they they get to choose where and how. So we've got to manage this distance with it. And the law also requires that not only words, but actions happen to justify our use of force. So this ask, tell, make is a boundary setting when you simply say to somebody, hey, can you back up? You're making me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Now, what does a normal person do? They surrender at that point. They're like, hey, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't geez, need to I'm make sorry, you uncomfortable. Back up, yeah. But if the guy keeps coming now, we have information. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you set a hard tell. I said, back up. You change your voice, you go to okay. hard syllables. Yep. And if he keeps coming, now we know that something is really wrong. Right. You know? Right. And this then we're going to yeah. make them stand back, you know, use voice, use our steps to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. If it's a low level, we're gonna use pepper spray yeah, or something like that. Something you know. One of the big things in a pepper spray course is not just how to how to use pepper spray, it's it's paying attention to surroundings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then it's you know, back off, leave me alone. Yeah. That mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And teaching people to to use their outside voice. Oh, it's yeah. so hard. Um, it is, and some people don't get it, and it's it's hard for them to do. Yeah. Well, you know, the selection process, you got to, if you've ever watched Wild Kingdom, you know how predators work. They look for the, the zebra that's not paying attention, right. the one that's weak, easy prey. the one that's sick. Absolutely. And as long as you don't appear as such, and then you use your words to set a hard boundary with them, you're making it more difficult for that predator to be efficient, and they don't want to be injured in the process because this is how they work. So we're making it harder and harder, and what simply happens is it's a binary decision. You're either going to say yes or no, and if there's any doubt in it, it's going to be a hard no. Mm -hmm. So you standing up straight, paying attention, using your words, having some pre-neat decisions, sure. you're going to be much better off in the long run, and then you're going to be able to make a predictive decision instead of reactive decision. Very cool. Mm -hmm. This is all the psychological stuff behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is all over my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you see why I left the answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brian's Brian, talking. Brian. Uh, yeah. Try editing his videos. <laughs> no, I'm so kidding. It's, uh, it's really, it's just he, he he's able to articulate uh, yeah, that, that, that uh, process. things uh, better than I in uh, in some subjects. And definitely, you see, this is just such his, his wheelhouse. He is such a, an excellent. Excellent teacher. Mm, so. The knuckle dragon MMA guy has some big words. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, the complete combat. You were you were mentioning that. Yeah. And uh, that's your guys' business. Yep. And you have a very cool. Uh, you have a very cool little logo. <laughs> I'll, I'll start this one. All right. Because uh, this is great. We were having lunch with uh, 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 several friends and um, some people that we didn't know. And a gentleman walked up, and uh, I hope he watches this, since he. You have to uh, send it to him. Uh, <laughs> uh, walked up, and he we had a t shirt on or something. And he says, Huh, the complete combat ant, huh? Tell me about that. <laughs> and it was just really kind of funny. Well, it planted the seed, and then of course it grew. Uh, maybe a year or so later, we decided, you know what? Uh, we're looking for a logo, and in the martial arts, there's always, you know, tigers or snakes or dragons, you know, and all that kind of claw-like stuff. And uh, we really liked uh, what he had said, mm -hmm. and it really fit with what we truly believe as Joe and Jane, the average citizen, right? Mm -hmm. That's training. Yeah. So tell them what we just, we just put a page on the website because we have so many people asking that we thought it was kind of obvious, the complete combatant, right? So I, it'd be the complete combat ant and there's I this ant with all these tools. Until you said it, I never got That's it. That's it. So we thought- You well, might have even explained it to me once. Yeah, I probably <laughs> did, but yeah, maybe years ago, but we thought it was kind of a cool, you know, play on words. And oh my God, great, absolutely. Great thing. But then as we started thinking about it, what what could we do with that and what does that ant mean to us? And it was so easy because Joe and Jane, which is what we named. So you tell them that, babe, because I love our new page. So our little mascot, if you think about it, ants build structure. They cooperate together. Um, they really 
work very hard at what they do. Mm. Um, and they're very useful as far as in their own organization. And then they can change tasks very quickly. They can go from builders to fighters. Mm -hmm. If anybody's ever stepped on a fire ant pile, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know, this little thing is suddenly making something 2,000 times bigger than it run and jump and scream. Wow. So what a good thing for the armed citizen. Uh, you're able to move through chaotic mm -hmm. environments, build structure, mm -hmm. you're able to defend yourself. Tool cycling. <laughs> and then you go from one thing to the next, you know? Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing for this is we like to say the armed citizen instead of the civilian. Yeah. Uh, because as the armed citizen, you carry a great deal of rights under the color of law to use force if you have met the proper justification for it. Mm -hmm. So we want the average person to be able to, home, to get home safely and to be able to move through their environments. And the only reason to defend yourself is, is it's an act of love because people count on you. You have people in your life that want you to survive. They have people that really need you to be there for you. Mm -hmm. So this is a way for us to cooperate together. And if the armed citizens all cooperate together, we know they're the most law-abiding portion of the mm -hmm. United States. For sure. You know, people that I, have carry permits. I say law-abiding yeah. background check yep. passing. That's it. Yeah. Yep. And that, it. you know, what a great thing. So, um, yeah, it's a funny little mascot. And maybe the literal people didn't get the wordplay. <laughs> and so we wrote a paragraph on it to make sure everybody does. And, you know, people will say, why do you have a bug? Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I could call out two people which I'm yeah. going to. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany, when we were at the AMCON a couple of years ago, yeah. she's like, Shelly, I'm so glad that you got up there, explained that that, <laughs> that bug to us. And then another friend, Melody, just on the phone, what, two or three weeks ago, and she's like, Shell, talk to me. Why you got a bug? <laughs> like, it's an ant, people. It's a, it was it's so not cute. A bug, obviously. <laughs> it yeah. is so cute. The ant's got a phone in one hand, a flashlight in yeah. the other, a pistol yeah, in the other. You know, so it's yeah. everything that we do. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's all, yeah. the, all the tools yeah. that we have, yeah. and he's got an yeah. arm for each one. The yep. only thing we were missing is we need the ant to have two more. Uh, one for like making a medical patch or something like that, another one for an OC. So. Well, it is 2020. If you ask for it, there right. may be it's some just, sort of mutation. Yeah, I was going to say, we need to add two more arms to our ant if anyone wants to do it. So anybody sees an eight-legged ant, it's Shelly's fault. That's just me. Right? I mean, we need it. From. We need it. That's great. You know, I thought it was really cool that you said that it's uh, carrying these tools is an act of love. And to me, uh, when I got to the point where I wanted to carry something, I my my attitude is I, I carry these tools to protect me and my kids and mm -hmm. that's kind of the boundary of the people I need to protect mm -hmm. because they're and this is something I got from Michael de Betancourt these are the only two people that I'm willing to go to jail or to go to the grave for I know. is is the boy and the girl as yeah, I affectionately yep. yeah, call you them do. Yeah. and that's that's it and I, I always tell people I might wear tights but I'm not a superhero or exactly mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> it's it like sorry visual visual <laughs> visual give me a minute okay sorry. I'm back you guys can't it's see down here. It's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's it is uh, it is like there's no there's no better way to say t to someone I love you, I love you so much that if I have to harm someone else, then that's to save you. Then that's what I need to do. You know, a lot of people don't feel comfortable with the idea of violence, and that's a good thing. That's you know that's yeah. wonderful. That yeah. means that you're you're sane and rational, and you're you're you're, you're thinking normally, but. If you take somebody who's hesitant and you say, what would you do to defend your children? The life changes. What would you do to defend your aging parent? Yeah. You know, and then you start setting, all right, these are pre-need decisions. These are the people I'm willing to step in the line of. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people in the world that are just high responders. Yeah. You know? Sure. And you're going to react to something. Uh, Shelly and I are both like that. Sh medical, law enforcement, we tend to run to the sounds of danger. Yeah. And the worst thing for us to be is to be unprepared. Right. We're just running in with nothing to help. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got medical training. We got law training. We use, we carry the tools with us that would be necessary for sure. it. And that way we're also uh, advantageous to society because if we do react, we don't just create more stress. We actually bring right. something to the fight or something to the situation. This is a, a, a actual true story um, we've shared a couple times. We were on my way to on our way to go see my parents' house. Uh, what two years ago? Yeah, give or take or something like that. And we're on the interstate heading up to the St. Louis area, and there was uh, cars on the side of the road, um, big you know, uh, interstate, and they were on the uh, right side. Excuse me, the left side. And uh, you can see there was a little little mess up there. So Brian and I pulled over because we would have been the first or second car on the scene. And we never spoke to each other. Brian just pulled over. He grabbed his gear. I grabbed mine. 
we ran, you know, obviously made sure it was okay, but we ran across the, the you know, five lane, four lane uh, interstate. Mm -hmm. Doing Check. flips and somersaults. Yeah, right, right, right with his cape. Yeah, with his cape and my high heels. Right. Yeah, because we're in stilettos that Doing day. Doing shoulder roll over yeah, the right. <laughs> just, just So uh, anyway, so we get over there and I'm like, has anyone called 911? No one's called 911. So I'm like, Brian, call 911 or wh whoever, whatever. I think I, I said that. And then we were at mile marker, blank, blank, blank. And Brian was already on it. And we made sure that everybody was safe on the scene. And then mm -hmm. we kind of made a, a decision for us, right? Because we were first responders. Yeah. Everybody was fine. 911 is on the way. There is no major deal except we got a couple cars that are in a very precarious uh, situation or uh, position because they're on the left side of a, of a five lane. And Brian and I kind of looked at each other and went, okay, we've now put ourselves in a situation that might mm. not be um, safe. Yeah. Because cars are coming, they're stopping, they're doing this. People aren't sure what to do. So right. Brian and I made the, the decision the that everybody was good. Things are happening as they should. It's time for us not to get run over. Yeah. So we crossed back over, we got back in the car, and we headed on. So once again, two decisions were made that day. Mm. One was an unconscious decision because we know we're going to go to the... The, the situation we did and the other one we just looked at each other and I don't even know that we spoke on we just kind of looked at each other and went everything's good here now we're not going to be a casualty because right. this this could cause some problems and we both just um, decided that we were we were more important at that time because everybody else was taken care of did right. that make sense hey technical note coming up again yeah there's that, a thing called shared responsibility okay you know mm -hmm. so we share the 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 desire to help Mm -hmm. So we work together. People often wonder how 20 people can stand by and watch something happen. Well, that's what happened. There. And oh the more gosh. people that are there, the more the responsibility yeah. is shared and the less likely anybody is to do anything. Yeah. The thing that changes an event is if one person says, you need to call 911, yeah. you need to do this, and you need to get going. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we're going to have our normalcy bias that everything's fine. And then you get stuck and you can't move. If somebody can change that, it works really well. Shared responsibility also goes for violent criminal actors. If there's more criminal actors and somebody begins to fight back, they're more likely to want to break off the attack than one single person is. Right. And that's what the, the data confirms because it's shared. Yeah. You know, oh God, yeah. uh, you know, Bob's getting it, so I better go. You know, right. right. So it's interesting to make sure that you understand how you work. You yeah, know, you have you, to know. You have to know, and if if you if you don't feel like you need to respond to something, then you can be a great witness. Yeah. You know. One of my favorite yeah. things with the force readiness class is when we have people that uh, get to experience some of that tool cycling with a blue gun, right, or search or some sort of like that, or a, a, a disabled firearm. But that would be in a, a completely different uh, different part of that program. But they one of my favorite things is when a person after training with us for two days says that's not for me they made a conscious decision to come to us put their little toes in and see if something they want to carry or put in the purse or whatever once again mm -hmm. that's not for me to delegate that's just for us to give people some some training right yeah give them some education give them some, some education let, let them, them make, make their, their own, own decisions. decisions right now there is pros and cons but that's not what this is about but when they say I can't do that you know right then and there you look at them and say is pepper spray or OC is that an option yeah mm -hmm. and you know what train yeah. train with that be a good witness be a good witness because that's needed too are, are you able to pick up the phone with that adrenaline rush and call 911 give your location mm -hmm. are you able to do that in the safety you know get away from that that situation that's that's scaring you right if it's not happening to you type thing mm -hmm. uh, to be a good witness or are you able to do a non-lethal and if they know that they know themselves more oh they've just gotten over a huge a uh, huge bump yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, so I, I like that because, you know, it's guns aren't for everyone. You know, uh, and that's okay. Yeah, and it, it is okay. I was, I've got a, a really good friend of mine who, you know, I want him to, to join the dark side. Um, <laughs> Come no, over. Right, I'm like, dude, you should carry. You're married, you've got kids. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. Um, but he's, he's got a, you know, he's got a permit and a gun. He lives in Illinois. Uh, and he is one of the hottest headed guys I know. Uh -huh. And I'm like, dude, I would love for you to carry a gun. I don't think you should. Because <laughs> you're a little 
little too fly off the handling. And and mm -hmm. you know, we were talking months after this. He's like, you know what? I am going to agree with you on that. That's right. He's like, it's not something I should carry. God, and I'm who, like, that's good. Who was it, honey, that said that if you carry? God, I want to say it's mess. If you carry a gun, you use lose the right to it the. Is massage. Is yeah. it massage? Massage. You. Yeah. To you to lose that attribution supply. Attribution, right. You lose the right to use that middle finger. Mm -hmm. Oh, or road absolutely. rage yeah. or something because if you're carrying the escalation and you're already a hothead once again I'm I hope I'm not butcher butchering it Masad, but something to that effect because and they're right you've got to know who you are uh, absolutely I I after I started care I hate to call them death tools <laughs> but um, you know maybe I should call them life, life tools life tools what do well, you call a fire extinguisher Life-saving equipment. It's life-saving equipment. Yep. Life-saving equipment. So after I started carrying this life-saving equipment, I, not that I drove aggressively, but I drove less aggressively. I, you know, if somebody merged in front of me, I had a girlfriend who's, yeah, I had a girlfriend said, instead of flipping people off, she blows them a kiss. I haven't gotten to that point. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. But I don't, but I'm I gonna don't do that. That'll start a fight for sure. That's <laughs> awesome. Doodles. Pretty girl does it, you do it, I want. That'd be awesome. <laughs> That's right. awesome. I mean, I, I don't flip uh, anyone off, but I don't blow them a kiss either. Yeah. Um, I grumble stuff under my breath and I let yep. them go and I'm like, friga, riga, riga, and, uh, and then I'm done. Yeah. So psychologically, when we get a carry permit, we also feel a great deal of responsibility and privilege. You know, I know it's our rights, but people feel the privilege of this. Yeah, for sure. And it doesn't exist in a lot of places in the world. And then people tend to act even better under the circumstances because they realize they begin a privilege and they mm -hmm. enjoy it. And they like to have the ability to do so. Sure. And that's why we find that the, you know, the armed citizen with a carry permit tends to be the most lying, law-abiding, not lying, law-abiding <laughs> part of the, this, even beyond the clergy and law enforcement. Yeah. Because this is a wonderful privilege. And you don't want to ruin it. It's, you it's, don't want to ruin like it. It's like Spider Man. Yep. It, with great responsibility. Yeah. Or with, oh, cool. with, with great power comes great responsibility. You got the Marvel geek in the house, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I grew up on comic books, hence the superhero right. complex. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting stuff, and, and yeah. I think this this too lends into the the armed society is a polite society. I'm not mm -hmm. going to go around causing trouble because I carry a lethal weapon on me or a lethal tool on me. I'm not. I'm just not. I don't want to have to pull it out. I don't want to have to use it. And talking to my non-gun friends who are like, "Oh, some dude parked too close to me and dinged my car. I'm going to go." Yeah, no, I'm like, not. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, what, no. what do you do when you get into an argument on the side of the road? I don't get into an you argument don't. on the side of the road. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if right. something happens, I'm going to get the hell out of there. That's it. Because I don't want to have to use this. That's right. And but that's our training, pre-need decision making. You know, Claude termed that when he took it from the funeral industry. Yeah, making the decisions in advance, pre-need decision making. What am I willing to do? Which applies a schema, a lens in your mind to look through and then you have a decisional process and you make a good decision but if you never decide about these things you're really likely to make a reactive decision which leads to more poor choices along the way mm. you know we can find those encounters all over the place so. right. I've seen this meme go around a couple times I want to say it's Clint Smith and it's basically says something along the lines of when when someone's attacking you it's not time to start to get some training yes that's exactly <laughs> Clint Smith you're gonna yep the best you are in training when something happens you'll meet the what percentage what uh, I don't know <laughs> it's, it's like 70% or something right? something yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. your best is your oh your performance so there it is yeah so yeah, whatever yeah. your best is you're gonna be about 70% of that Brian uses my words guys just so you know I I'm the noun keeper yeah he's the noun keeper yeah, yeah. got some yeah, psychological yeah. stuff yeah. Like I, the I love the humidity on. my hair is getting like Roseanne Rosanna Dana so I'm messing with it but go on go on so go on, you'll on. you'll be 70% of who you are under stress usually right. but that can be mitigated with training right that's exactly you know you can become more and more so that's why we train so that we have a comfortable margin that allows us to meet whatever's coming towards us and that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. you know we all know what we're gonna do in a fire you know we use oh, yeah. this example with children how many children have died in a school fire since they instituted the policy none none that's a perfect record build the schools out of fire resistant material apply fire extinguishers and drill the students occasionally so they know what they need to do right but what is the difference with violence it becomes personified. Mm. It's people oriented and it's harder for people to talk about that, but we need to have some sort of reaction plan to it so that we know what to do and it's not a surprise and then we don't make a bunch of bad decisions in it. Yeah. You know. You guys spend a lot of time 
um, with what your image? Yeah, you said yeah. it was here. Where it's, oh, I'm sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice and warm. <laughs> Just everybody knows. Oh, thank you for bringing that. Uh, That's super thank, cool. Thank you. Thank Excellent. You. So, so you, sweet. You, Can I blow you a kiss now? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I will flip you off. <laughs> right, 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 and right, I deserve right. it. Yeah. Non-lethal. <laughs> non-lethal. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right on. So um, yeah, yeah, so tell us about, like you guys do the image um, yep, image-based decisional drills. There we go. Uh, I can never remember what That's it's right. called. That's right. I call it IBDD. Just leave IBDD. it at that. IBDD. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how do you guys come up with these? Um, January 2019, um, um, I was talking with uh, Claude, as a matter of fact, and um, well, let me backtrack just a little bit. Um, I am dyslexic, so pictures and doing things work better for me than um, words and writing. Mm -hmm. So just simply that. And I don't know what I was, kind of maybe struggling with something or whatever, and then we had the mingle coming up. And uh, Real yep. quick, the mingle. The mingle, yep, that is a annual event that the Complete Combatant puts on and invites uh, women uh, in the firearms industry, could be range owners, could be reps for something, could be instructors, could be uh, women's groups, you know, that you know the you know type thing. So in the industry, uh, to come to our range in Dahlonega once a year, usually in May, but we're doing it October because of COVID. Right. I'm so glad you said Dahlonega because I look every time you write that, I'm like, how, how do you, you pronounce this? that? Dahlonega. You know <laughs> right? To me, I'm like, all right, it's Dagoba. That's yeah, right. no, no, Dahlonega. Dahlonega. Yep. Right. So uh, and. They come and we bring some really special, um, interesting, wonderful uh, instructors or presenters to help with continuing education. Mm -hmm. And we have outstanding sponsors that, that give us uh, time, money, energy, everything else uh, to put this on. And uh, if you want to find out more about it, if you're a lady in the firearms industry, please uh, just go to uh, thecompletecombatant.com and you're going to see the mingle. The so mingle. I won't, right. yeah, I won't waste any more time on that. Like but there, yeah. um, so we wanted something for that that year, and uh, Claude had mentioned, well, you know, I've got this little thing that you know maybe maybe a picture would would help, and I'm like, oh my gosh! So I just kind of took it and ran with it, mm -hmm. and uh, so what we've got now is it's, it's a little uh, kit. It's a little kit. And uh, the kit comes with waterproof kit, but it comes with your cheat sheet of the image-based decisional drill options, walk away, verbal commands, run, OC, shoot, which would be a failure to neutralize, which would be two to the body, one to the head, call 911, how to use a tourniquet, because people forget about medical. Medical, right? You you need yeah. to have those, those basic life-saving skills, and not because... It's less you're, you're it's it's less common for you to get shot than it is for you to uh, cut yourself with a window or fall off a ladder, whatever. Sure. So that's good. And then flashlight, that's another thing that we do. So uh, this here is something that comes with it. It's the simple steps to apply a tourniquet. And we got together what with Dr. Sherman House and did that. And then it's a, a booklet. And then what comes with it is HK has donated uh, this HK gone uh, has donated this flashlight. Uh, for us, uh, for each kit, and then we've got, um, oh, this is so cute, it's not even open yet. This goes home with you, by the way. Um, Palm Industries, I love Palm. Uh, excellent OC, excellent OC. Uh, they make inert as well. This is inert and goes in there, so you can practice uh, your, your nonverbal. Um, for your firearm skills, uh, you also get a card that I put in some of these, okay, not all of them, it's kind of a special thing. Uh, that it's a five, five, five challenge and it's about uh, shooting skills mm -hmm. and uh, I'll let Brian explain that one but you also get a a telephone obviously it's a prop but it's a phone <laughs> so you can practice the 911 calls and what you're oh, going to say because yeah. yeah people lose their words lose their words and you got to remember that that when 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 you push 911 even before it starts ringing mm -hmm. it's being recorded so the second 911 is pushed on your phone, it's recording before they even pick up. So you need to know. What? You need to be in the moment, stay in the process, and know what you're going to say. And that's difficult. So that comes with it as well. Then we've got our pasters, because this is live fire or dry practice. So this will help you as well, as far as uh, your misses. And then in here, I don't even know if I can get this open quickly. 
Um, I'm sure someone has a knife. Yeah, do you have a knife on you, my I, darling? I Why did everybody look at me? Yeah, I right. noticed you have one in each open pocket. That for me. That'd be awesome. <laughs> well, that's pepper spray. I'm glad you brought this. Okay. That's so cool. So obviously, you want to talk about it. But uh, I'm a highly trained professional. No, this is so cool. So Brian's getting it. So these cards come with it. 21, thank you, honey. 21 image-based decisional cards come with it. And, uh, you know, it could be something like this. Everything is four yards from you. What do you do? Make a decision. Maybe something as simple as uh, you're walking your dog at night and this person is starting to approach you. You've got about five seconds. Let's make a decision mm. on what you're going to do. And it's about tool cycling. You know, you're at work and this is a customer. Make a decision. So all these things are all in this. Simply a parking lot. What do you do? Well, mm -hmm. this one's nothing more to me. Would I would just have OC in my hand. Right. And it's kind of dark, so maybe I'd maybe have a flashlight. flashlight walk down but the middle. Truthfully, what yeah. am I going to do? I'm going to be really aware, and I'm going to have my my flashlight. So the booklet that comes with it actually tells you uh, some basics here and walks you all through it. So yeah. And then we've got some really cool um, industry people that have. Uh, given their time and have picked out expansion packs and these these industry oh, cool. folks um god i start naming them off here i think we have 26 because we have the whole alphabet plus aa we have 27 different uh people <coughs> in the industry um wow. that are yeah just great minds um that have picked out eight images that they think would be important for the, the average person to uh, be able to react to Mm -hmm. And then, so you just go to the, the website, which that one is image based decisional drills okay. uh, dot com. So we'll you go to that, there. but you go to the expansion pack and you'll see all the excellent people. But that's awesome. Um, but really, uh, when I went to HK and mm -hmm. I went to Palm and I said, this is what I want to do. You know, what can we work out? And they're like, I love this. This is for you. You, you, you put this in these kits. We, that we is want amazing. to be a part of this. <clears throat> so we're really, really That's pretty amazing. lucky with that. Yeah. yeah I, wonderful I, feedback. And I'm, we're, we're just now, we've got some local ranges yeah. that we're doing now wholesale. <laughs> So that's cool. Very and, cool. Uh, I have a package that goes out to Germany that wow. we're going to take tomorrow. And we've sent to Austria and we've sent to Hawaii. So you it's kind of cool. all over so the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. So international. International, world, right? It's only famous. three, guys. It's only three. But, you know, you got to start somewhere. And uh, it's already growing that right now I'm working with a great group of people um, that are helping, uh, helping Brian and I do a, a pack of cards that will be for parents mm -hmm. and it will be images that would be for children four through maybe 12 ish um, along the same lines obviously all non-lethal no tools involved unless it's at hand um, but a four-year-old if they see this let's recognize this now Mm. And it's not for uh, us to teach, it's for the parents to teach, because everybody has their own rules and parenting sure. styles, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's going to give them the, the images to help them have some difficult conversations um, on what to do if you see something like this. So it would be another educational to tool for children. And then we're also working on uh, medical. We've got wow. some, yeah, some, some teaching going so all this is start to, starting to come together. It's pretty That's exciting a, stuff. That is amazing. Pretty exciting stuff. That is great. You guys work like dogs. <laughs> my, my boss. My boss sucks. Mine too. <laughs> Mine sucks too, and it's me. <laughs> anyway, add to that. What, what, add to that. So the reason you need this is, yes. I'm going to make some of you mad, but you're really not multitaskers. Yeah. You, you, you can do several things at once, but you can't do it well. And what happens in self-defense is there's a cognitive stack of moving your feet, talking, cycling tools, making decisions. And the more of those that you get in a row, the harder it is. But if you develop some unconscious competency in the decisions that I don't have to require to think about either saying the words of telling somebody to go away, or I don't have to think about moving my feet, or I don't have to think about what to watch on the sure. other person, yeah, then I'm going to be the streamlined. Mm -hmm. I'll be much quicker than I was before because we are serial processors. We can change from one task to another. The problem with people is once they get on one tool, they find it ridiculously hard to let go of that tool, mm, even if it true. doesn't serve them. Uh, there's great uh, research on smoke jumpers that jump into fires that sometimes when they get caught in the fire, if they would drop all their tools and run as fast as they could, they would survive. But they can't let go because, you know, you get taught this tool is going to save you. Right. But sometimes we have to cycle through decisions very quickly 
And the other thing is, if you make a decision in advance, like you walk into a dark parking lot and you use your flashlight, yeah. you're signaling to everybody that you're aware and you simply deselect yourself out because they're gonna assume you're security or police. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you won't need to do all these bad things because we know the legal battle is horrific oh. if you have to defend yourself. Right. And then there's a the moral battle. Did you do the right thing? Can you live with it? Yep. And it may cost you everything you ever learned or your freedom. You know, everything that you yeah. earned. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. So that we want to prepare you so that you can avoid the situation at all costs or at least be ahead of it as soon as you can be. Right. Gotcha. And this is why you're the complete <laughs> combatant. He gets it now. I'm an ant. I love ants. They're my favorite. I never had an ant that looked like him. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. I'm a giant ant. <laughs> That's funny. So. Yeah, we also went a little bit further with the image-based decisional drills. It's um, The response is, is pretty good with um, um, people that are instructors or not instructors as far as firearms mm -hmm. that would like to introduce this into their group or into the Girl Scouts or into the 4-H clubs or, you know, whatever, or into their, um, their family. And we actually uh, have our first, what, March 2021, our first instructor certification course. Wow. Because you can do this on your own, but mm -hmm. if you want to do it and and uh, with a group of people, you, you need to have the some deeper knowledge like Brian here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I kind of turn it to him. It's not because I, I don't know this stuff. It's just he's such a better person to explain it right. or a better explainer uh, than me. But um, if you come to this two-day course, it will help you understand this, which means you will be able to help others um, that are on the line with, you know, once again, live fire or, or, or dry practice, and that gives them a little bit step up. So you can actually teach others um, cool. some, some non-lethal um, decisions, too. This cool. is where we plug in our byline right here, our ma yeah. mantra that we like to say, mm -hmm. we'd like you to measure what you're doing, we'd like you to reform what, uh, refine what you're doing, and then perform it. What you're doing. And that's how you make measurable difference. We talked about that in music. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're doing. Can I do this? What do I need to get more efficient at? Yeah. And then I need to perform it so that I, I feel comfortable doing these things. And the odd thing about all this training is the better you get at it, the less likely it is to happen to right. you. Right. So, for sure. very cool. Cool. All right, listen, we are almost where we need to be. So yep. let's wrap things up. How can people find all of your guys' stuff? I'm gonna guess thecompletecombatant.com. Look at that. Oh my gosh. She's brilliant with this stuff because otherwise you wouldn't get anything from me but a bunch of big words. <laughs> you can go to thecompletecombatant.com and uh, check out everything we do and the email, if you want to email us, is thecompletecombatant at gmail.com. Nice. And then hold on, are you ready? The image-based decisional drills, you want more information on that or to order, guess what that is? Imagebaseddecisionaldrills.com. Wow. Guys, guess what the email is? Image based decisional drills at gmail.com. That's it. Yeah. All any right. questions or anything, that's where you can find us, guys. Very cool. So, we're going to put links for all that stuff. I want to thank you guys for being on the show and for um, hopping in the car and having me come down and hosting me for. Uh, for the last day and dinner and, and it was our pleasure, was man. Our pleasure. This, this was, was awesome. This a pleasure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being much, on the show. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Honey. Oh, you're the Thank best. You, honey. Uh, so I'm going to put links to all of the complete combatant uh, websites and the image <laughs> drill based. Doing image great, based man. Drill. Wait, yep. way to pay attention. Way <laughs> to I, make I got it his All the love. <laughs> Image-based decisional drills. All right, I thought it was... <laughs> but order now. <laughs> Gensu knives. I'm used to saying IMDB, and I know that's not it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It's not it. Image-based decisional drills. And it's I, long. I couldn't remember if the D was first or the B was first. <laughs> so I'm, want, not, I'm yeah. not Lex Disick, but no, uh, I do you're get great. easily confused. <laughs> that's awesome. So anyway, so we're going to put links in the, for their websites, and you can contact them. Please make sure you like and share and watch all of the writing shotgun with charlie's on youtube on gunstreamer on apple podcast on spotify on iHeartRadio. make sure you share these i love that people share these i love when people uh, tag me on these and on their facebook posts when they share these with all of their folks also make sure you check out the self-defense radio network sdrn.us sure. it is all of your pro freedom podcasts in the same place and we will see you guys next time thank you guys so much this is what we're doing to Get the stagecoach across America. That's it. All right, That's guys. It. Disappointed there's us. no shotgun. <laughs> I was told there would be a shotgun. <laughs> it might be in the trunk. Oh, okay. All right, cool. <laughs> I got to drive to New Jersey. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye, guys.